In today's video, learn about how ENFPs can connect with their introverted feeling and how they can use their feelings to uh, stay motivated and stay on track in their lives. In today's video, I have a special guest that's uh, NB, uh, a really cool YouTuber who has become really successful on YouTube lately. I saw you just hit 1,000 subscribers. Well, uh, uh, I did, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and uh, I think it's more than deserved because I see you put a lot of effort into editing and into your scripts and into just really creating a fun and really dynamic and unique content. I, I try. I try to bring out ENFP content. So very original, really fun and deep <laughs> content. <laughs> so since we're talking about feelings, how are you feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good, feeling good, and I'm feeling good. Um, yeah. Oh. Hold on, I need to check in with FI. It might take a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have the time. So, uh, what's it like to be an ENFP in um, a busy world that often pushes and pulls you to be successful and hardworking and uh, career oriented? Uh, and uh, how do you make sure that you can that you don't lose touch with your inner moral compass and authenticity and all of that? So that's an interesting question because I think, uh, well, the the outside world is always trying to uh, stimulate. I mean, it's always stimulating our extroversion and our so our extroverted intuition, but also extroverted thinking. And I think it's easy to. Uh, fall into kind of a, a trap where you get a lot of ideas on how to be more productive, how to become successful. And then with extroverted thinking, you know how to get those ideas, how to implement those ideas. And so you think you know <laughs> what you want to do and how to do it, but then it doesn't feel right uh, because you're bypassing uh, introverted feeling. And, um, and I, when you do that, it's like you don't feel your negative emotions, like uh, that you're stressed because you're not doing something uh, that speaks to your soul. Um, and yeah, so it's difficult. It's like, you gotta have a wake up call at some point. Uh, if you're someone who's trying, who's listening, I mean, who doesn't listen to society, you know, to a certain extent. Uh, and um, yeah, so how do I get over this kind of loop? Um, so I've recently found uh, a few videos on YouTube because YouTube is my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> There are videos by Heidi Preeb, the queen of ENFPs. If you guys don't know her, definitely check her out. Um, she's She's got a degree in psychology. So, you know, like she's serious. <laughs> and uh, so her video that really changed my outlook on emotions um, were about emotion self-regulation. Obviously, I don't remember the details. <laughs> Hopefully, I will comment with the, the video on this video. Um, and it's really interesting because uh, I think it goes beyond cognitive functions. It's uh, something that in our society we don't do often. It's just checking in with our bodies and checking in with our emotions, which are not really valued in our very uh, yang society, masculine society. Uh, emotions are kind of, you know, lowly, not, not valued for yeah. what they should be. Uh, yeah. And so it's about, it's kind of like mindfulness. How do I feel? Where do I feel it in my body? And then that gives us uh, an insight as to, you know, emotions are a signal, a sign from our souls that is trying to communicate via our bodies because 
our heads don't want to listen because we're so into like uh we're losing ourselves in the outer world and not taking enough care of our inner worlds so that was a long answer <laughs> it was a good answer <laughs> but, i know you mentioned uh, heidi preeb and um, yeah i know how she wrote the enfp survival guide and i read it that one recently and oh, yeah. uh, yeah. in that one she did mention how she kind of like instead of like processing breakups and negative experiences she just kept thinking about the next thing she needed to do uh, mm -hmm. and it was always something like completely different like i need to go travel to another country or i need to change my job or i need to fix something so it, it kept her in this proactive mood of always like focusing on what's next yeah. um and uh, so I was wondering, did you have any similar experiences or have you had any similar experiences in that regard? So I think that's when you get stuck in extroverted intuition. Uh, mm, I think it's more of, a, it's not a long-term thing, but sometimes uh, I have a phase where I get really uh, scattered but it was never anything as serious as what she mentioned. Uh, and no, so I would say, no, I, I've never really experienced that, but I definitely have a lot of ideas all the time. And then I want to implement them. And I just have, you know, it's like an intuitive overview on how to get there, you know, yeah. for thinking. And, uh, and then I just don't have the energy or it doesn't, it, it's too rational an idea to follow for my little soul that is like, nah, not today. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that leads me to, uh, it, you know, it's different from what Heidi uh, described in, in the book. Uh, it's more like the loop, extroverted intuition, extroverted thinking. Mm. Yeah, uh, you mentioned like having high ideals. So I assume that means high expectations in the sense of like what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so is it that ENFP sets two ambitious goals for themselves? Should they be less ambitious? Would that be better? Uh, or what's your thought on that? So I don't think that's uh, specifically related to the MBTI. I would say that's more like your education and again that's a little bit like um connected with how how well you cater to your own needs <laughs> um so how to put it if you let the outer world tell you who you should be what you should do to love yourself and to feel content then you're always going to be uh, stressed uh, and you're going to be a perfectionist because it's all external yeah uh, so i think i think that's more like um, a problem with extroversion and again it all comes down to we need to uh, be mindful of our inner worlds and connect with it take the time to step back and be like is this what i actually want mm -hmm. and um yeah that's what i would say is it sometimes then um, you ask uh, yourself like is that what i really want is it sometimes the case that enfps uh, uh, like get distracted by the fact that it is a new opportunity and that there's something next uh, that they don't even think about what their intentions are or why they are going for that and why they think that would make yeah. them happy or yeah so the thing with extroverted intuition is that you get instant an instant kick yeah. <laughs> from a new idea so you're happy you're happy following that new idea it's there happiness is happening uh and that's how i think it's easy to get lost uh with new yeah. new ideas and new opportunities and what would be the consequences if you completely just detach from introverted feeling and just uh, keep on going? Uh, like you imagine you get super rich and you get a lot of things done. Like uh, why why should you want to use your introverted feeling? Like if you can just uh, get the nice big car and maybe go into traveling all the time, you know? 
Well, because that's not meaningful enough. You know, that's why ENFPs need meaningfulness in their lives because introverted intuition, uh, introverted feeling brings balance. Uh, you know, the, the mind needs to be balanced. So if there's extroversion, there's going to be a need for introversion. So if you're always in your extroverted intuition, at some point, you're just going to feel empty, chasing after things that, sure, make you happy for half a second, but the next one, you're going to be unhappy. And that's mm -hmm. why you need to um, connect with introverted feeling and, you know, lie down and do nothing. And it's yeah. just going to come up to you. All those ideas are like listening to music. Uh, I mean, that's what I like to do. Or reading as well, because it just like puts you in this bubble. And oftentimes when I read, I don't... <laughs> I don't read the book. I'm just in my thoughts. So you're, and, you're just, it's, it's more a tool, a vessel for your imagination. I digress like crazy. Oh my God, it's so difficult to read. I, I mean, it, I think people might, uh, might wonder if I don't have ADHD, but uh, I, I don't think so. I think it's just me not focusing. Like I can focus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that, you know. I'm being chilled, like, why yeah. would I focus? <laughs> I know that the ENFPs are uh, statistically the personality type most likely to identify with ADHD uh, yeah. and to have considered diagnosis next to ENTPs uh, was second place. Um, and couldn't it possibly be that, you know, if you're stuck in the NETE loop, like if you're constantly like going from possibility to possibility, yeah. that uh, uh, if there is no FI there, if there is no in, uh, introverted feeling there, if you're uh, not in check with yourself, with why you're doing it, with what purpose, and if it really matters, and if it really connects to you, that you start getting sloppy, distracted, the, um, lack of focus, that you struggle to make decisions because um you're not like in touch with that because maybe that's maybe that's the puzzle piece that you need in order to kind of uh, balance uh, uh that uh, quick paced uh, effective productivity absolutely i i really think so um i think what like when you truly have adhd you don't you really lack this possibility to focus or you have too much of it because sometimes that's ADHD as well when you you focus so much on something and you forget the whole world uh, so it's like it's literally uh, attention uh, deficit focus or like a, a problem with focusing whereas mm -hmm. as you just said like uh, if it's an issue with connecting with your introversion with introverted feeling and even introverted sensing yeah. it's not adhd and like who am i to to say what i'm gonna say but yeah maybe yeah maybe a lot of a lot of enfps and entps who are diagnosed with uh, adhd sometimes it's it might be a wrong diagnosis uh, but again who am i to say that like literally yeah <laughs> No, the truth is uh, personality and uh, diagnosis are often best kept separate. Uh, it's interesting to study the connection between them, for sure. And there's definitely a trend with uh, uh, ENFPs and ENTPs that feel they have uh, ADHD. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you uh, do wonder if you have ADHD, it's always best to talk to a psychologist about it and uh, to think about, okay, to what extent does this affect me in my life and my relationships and at my work? And uh, to which degree am I able to live a normal life? Because many of these diagnoses yeah, have I to do with, you know, how suited are you to live in the modern world where we're supposed to sit still for eight hours a day and yeah. to focus on one task and to uh, pay bills and time and uh, follow so, yeah <laughs> set lines yeah, and structures most of the time a diagnosis is about how much it impacts your life in a negative way yeah yeah exactly so to get back to the question of uh, introverted feeling a bit i was wondering um what are some things you do to get more connected with introverted feeling and uh, um have you to some extent uh, oh, actually let's just start with that <laughs> so uh 
you know, I try to try to be a little introvert. <laughs> so take taking some time for myself. Uh, and yeah, uh, I mean, for me, I think it goes back to what I was saying before, uh, like laying down, doing nothing. That's when that's when you can let thoughts marinate. <laughs> and that's introversion. It's like, oh, you're uh, like um, your mind produces, uh, produ produces <laughs> energy from within. That's literally introversion. And so for an ENFP, the first kind of introversion that uh, will come out, I mean, stay in, <laughs> um, will be introverted feeling. It's going to be like, oh, yeah, was that right? Was that wrong? Uh, this thing that happened and that thing. And probably there's a lot of introverted sensing as well, uh, like connecting with how you experienced certain situations and then connecting them with introverted feeling uh, because you know there's never one without the other you need a perceiving function together with uh, a judging function in order to <laughs> come to a conclusion because you need data to make a decision on yeah. something and um yeah so taking time for yourself uh so you're saying like basically don't just be an intuitive but also be a feeling type at the same time allow yourself to use both uh yeah those and also, processes and also actually introverted sensing is just as uh important um reflecting on what you've done mm -hmm. you know because as you said extroverted intuition is so uh future focused and when you connect with introverted sensing then you look back on past experiences and you can draw conclusions from them mm -hmm. using introverted feeling and then you know oh this and that was wrong that's not what i think introverted feeling often knows what it doesn't want i mean mm -hmm. that's how it comes uh comes up in your rational mind and your conscious consciousness um whereas I mean, no, that's that's a little what I'd say. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So essentially, uh, one thing that uh, I've noticed is I work a lot with connecting the MBTI to the study of flow. Uh, yeah. And that uh, means that often extroverts, they get into a flow state when they are um, engaging with the outer world in some way. And that exactly. means it's really flow. Else they're uh, not uh, extroverts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, that means it's really fun and really like stimulating uh, to do that. But at the same time, I think, you know, uh, sometimes we have to be able to set boundaries and to like self-regulate our sense of fun <laughs> in a sense though, that, uh, you know, it can be difficult to uh, say no to things that we don't want, but it can be even more difficult to say no to things that we actually enjoy and actually find rewarding right yes yes i think especially for feeling types for introverted feelers anyone who uses that function uh as their dominant judging function uh so esfps isfps enfps infps um i think it's difficult to set boundaries in the outer world because any introverted process will take a while to make a decision uh and the more the more chaos the more input you get the more you have to filter so if you're on the spot and people are like hey do you want to do this and that and then we can do this and that blah 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 uh obviously this your extroverted your extroversion will take over so for enfp's extroverted intuition and it's going to be like yeah yeah new projects cool uh and it's only later on that introverted feeling will be like hold on actually i don't want to do that and then it's difficult to uh to say no to something you um you just agreed on and that you know will uh, make other people happy because i think introverted feelers uh in the large sense of the term uh really enjoy pleasing other people because they're like oh, I, I would love people to treat me like that so i want to treat people the way i want to be treated you know so yeah it's difficult to set boundaries 
Yeah. So one thing that I picked up on is that uh, while ENFPs are extroverted intuitives and perceiving types, to some, to some extent, your introverted sensing uh, side really, really wants you to finish uh, things you start. So one thing that I noticed is that for me, um, I can be pretty goal oriented and I can be pretty focused for a long time on a project, but I don't uh, like necessarily need to uh, uh, stick to things to or stick within the lines. But sometimes I notice this in of peace, while you might break the line, sometimes you do feel bad about it. And you're like, I should stay within the lines and I should be on time and I should follow these rules and I should do it in this process. It's so interesting. Yeah, I definitely feel like that. Like everything that I, every project, every book that I haven't finished, I do intend to finish. It's it's still there at the back of my mind. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to get done. And <laughs> yeah, so. But have you ever heard about, you know, the movie trick? You know, like if you go to a movie halfway through, it's a terrible movie. It's the worst movie you've ever seen. You're excruciatingly bored. Like, do you leave the cinema or do you stay watching it until the end? I think that's like, I would stay. But that's an issue with perfectionism. And that, again, it's not, I think, directly connected to cognitive functions. It's more connected to... Uh, traumas and stuff and how you treat yourself so mm -hmm. if you're too hard on yourself uh you you're gonna want to do everything perfectly because yeah, uh, yeah you're like this is what's fair it has yeah. to be done well uh yeah so i think it's more connected to that than to the mbti yeah, because like technically, you know, like it would make no sense to keep watching something you don't enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, well, why are you putting time in there? You think to yourself, yeah, but I put money to the ticket, so I've already committed to it, so I should watch it. But you know, you're only getting less. You're only getting more and more loss. Uh, so you're not. Oh, you're first. You put in money for it, but also you know now you're gonna have to sit there for another half hour or one hour uh, for no reason. Uh, and I was thinking about it uh, because uh, you brought up how this could be connected to trauma and mindset, uh, how we kind of in the Western culture have this like very strong like idea of like, do not waste opportunities, like uh, um, do not throw away food, you know, like all of those things, you know, like, and uh, to some extent, like, yeah. yeah, to some extent it makes sense because it's wasteful, but to another extent, it's like, why should you keep eating if you're full, you know, or yeah. for example, so. absolutely. absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah, uh, it's definitely part of all the rules that our society um, sets for us. You need yeah. to finish what you start and everything that you said. I agree. Yeah. Now, I would want to touch a little bit on the extorted thinking side, because uh, one thing I was wondering was uh, um, how uh, much uh, should an ENFP value success in the outer world and how much should they value personal identity and uh, uh, their personal uh, values and the artistic side? I think it's uh, valid for everyone. You should only value uh, your own conditions to self-love. So you, you really don't need to listen to what society tells you is success like define what is success to you and even even that like uh, i think success is kind of a, a bad word to use like you're you're always worth it as a person no matter what you do like whether you're successful or not i think mm -hmm. and that's a next level um to reach uh <laughs> when you connect with introverted feeling it's like uh, just valuing your inner input for what it is um so i think extroverted thinking for enfps should just be you know like a counselor uh, and it, yeah extroverted thinking is about seeing um oh, impersonal uh, systems and how things work together in an impersonal way so it doesn't really have to do that much with 
productivity. I know, I know I even say that a lot, but that's like just a way for people to understand uh, extroverted thinking in a quick way. But extroverted thinking is more about trying to connect things in the outer world in an impersonal way. So in that sense, uh, how do ENFPs, how should ENFPs use it? Well, uh, I think we should use it in a way that serves our, the goals that really mean something to us and that makes us, that make us feel excited. So, yeah. yeah. So essentially it should just be a tool for you while uh, yeah. introverted feeling should be the uh, uh, for real authority people. or the yeah <laughs> yeah exactly the purpose uh, yeah. and so uh, I was sorry. wondering yeah. sorry I'm just gonna say that but I think that's true for everyone like you should always follow your inner inner needs you know uh, what your soul truly yeah. wants that's the point of being alive <laughs> you know uh, becoming who you truly are so. Yeah. If, you, if you're not an introverted uh, feeler, then you're probably going to have, uh, like your un unconscious is going to talk to you through introverted thinking, maybe a bit more and introverted sensing or introverted uh, intuition. And if you follow those uh, functions, then you, you won't get lost in the outer world as much. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, do you feel like you managed to uh, achieve this? Do you feel, or do you feel like you still have something to learn there? Uh, no, I'm pretty good. I think at uh, you know, in general, I'm pretty good at doing what I want because I'm I'm a, a donkey. Like if I don't want to do it, uh, there's no way you can make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents have tried no i'm kidding that's not even true my parents have always been like you do what you want um yeah so you're an unstoppable force basically. yeah but at the same time you know life is not all black or white you know you can't escape the i mean our society's propaganda on everything like what is success what is beauty blah 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 so you're gonna have to fight against that to to become happy and to uh, follow your inner compass, whatever happens, you know. I think so too. Mm. Now, I want to say uh, thank you uh, so much for joining me in this video, and I want to ask all the NFPs uh, in the comments down below share your experiences with introverted feeling, and uh, I want to say. Uh, NP is currently doing a series on relationship dynamics. So she was just uh, she recently released a video on the ENFP and ISTJ. So if you're curious about those kind of topics, I would definitely recommend checking out NP's channel, and there will be a link down below. Uh, and thank you again so much for uh, joining in. Thank you, Eric, and thank you everyone for watching. <laughs> See you soon. Hopefully. Bye. <laughs>